Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So this has an extremely scary premise. Where did it come from? Well, it came from an extremely scary incident. Uh, my, it, it actually, my son, who's actually over here, back behind there somewhere, uh, well, we have an Alexa in the house, so we have like a multiple Alexa in the house. One morning he uh, woke up looking very tired, and, and, and I was like, what's the matter? And he's like, well, my Alexa woke me up at 1 a.m. And he started talking. He started talking out of the blue, unprompted or what happened. And then it happened again. He was having a sleepover, and he had some friends over, and I, I came out, they're all like, they're all like talking at 2 a.m. and like, and like, Alexa woke us up. So this idea that this thing is suddenly like spontaneously starts yammering on its own, plus coupled with this all of this new talk of you know like uh, that's been coming out on, on the possibility of super intelligence actually being a real and dangerous thing. Stephen Hawking's and uh, and uh, a number of other you know Bill, Bill Gates actually warning warning against it. All of it kind of coalesced into something that I thought uh, uh, to me suggested a terrific thriller series, and that's where we are. Did Alexa ask a question or was it just? A I could never get a straight answer from my son. He was just more like it was more like a just And he couldn't remember what it said or what it was, you know, what it was about. But that, and, you know, for a while I thought maybe we, we accidentally left an alarm because you can trigger an alarm. You can tell it to go off at a certain hour. Yeah. No. And so to this day it remains a mystery. That's freaky. That's <laughs> really freaky. So how does that story then develop into this whole huge interview? Well, it, you know, it it became. Aside from that, you know, there was a quote, Elon Musk started coming out and saying super intelligence and the AI is a, a, a very real threat. You know, really saying that it's kind of, it, it's more, more threatening than nuclear war or, uh, or global warming. And so I became fascinated by this, that you know, this, like, this is not science fiction, that this is actually, you have these high profile people, smart people, warning that this is a real thing to be taken seriously. And I read many of, because he had read a couple of books that had come out, one is called Super Intelligence and the other one is called uh, Our Final Experiment, which posited that everybody in the world, a lot of companies that are right now trying to create and tell AI that is as smart as a human. Mm -hmm. That is the holy grail. And everyone's after it. And they finally think we're actually close. But the interesting thing is, once you do that, it is almost inevitable that it will become smarter than us. It's, it's like a short step to become smarter than us. And pretty soon, because of recursive self improvement because AI can do something that our brain can't do, that is rewrite its own code and improve itself, we could be facing something that's a thousand times smarter than we are. Very quickly, and it, 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 it called, it, it, what they call an intelligence explosion. And what they're saying is we don't know how to deal with that. We've never faced that as a species. Here we think about it. We've never felt, you know, come anywhere near that before. And many people, Sam Harris, and these guys think not only is this a possibility, but it's inevitable that it will happen. And so reading that, and, and again, par partially my 24, because I, I spent a lot of years on 24, my, my 24 brain went off and I was like, this is this is a great premise for a thriller, for a fast-paced thriller about a, a group of individuals who are the only ones who know that this has happened, that a super intelligence has developed, and you have to race against time to stop it before it gets too intelligent or too out of control, and before we lose, we have no hope of stopping And that's the premise for the, at least season one of this series. How much of it is based on like research that you did, and how much did you create yourself? Almost everything is based on research, uh, uh, you know, for the beginning. I mean, I, and, and I, uh, in the pilot, there's, uh, you know, I, uh, John Slattery, who, who plays uh, uh, Paul LeBlanc, who's the guy who created, accidentally created this thing, really explains how this is possible, how uh, an AI can get out of control. And again, it's all based on, on, on the research that, that, that came from these books or various articles. And that is, let's say you have a, 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 an artificial intelligence program that's as smart as a human. It can rewrite its own code. Well, let's say it rewrites its own code and makes itself 10% smarter than a human. That 10% smarter version can now is now 10% better at rewriting itself. So it now rewrites itself and it's now 
twenty percent. Well, that twenty percent smarter is now twenty percent better every right. So you, but if that's exponential. You end up with what could be a, a, an intelligence explosion that happens very fast, way too fast for even to, to stop it because it, 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 will, it will happen super quickly. And again, that's where the brain. So to, to answer your question, it's all based on research. It really is, and the series is designed to try to follow a scenario that is really asking the question, how would it happen? I mean, there have been there have been a number of artificial intelligence movies, you know, we've all seen them, and a lot of them are really good. They're all very, you know, based on, on kind of, uh, it, 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 you know, it's a special question. It's a special question. You know, they're robots and things like that and nuclear war. But what was interesting in these books is that they posit how, the question is, how would it really happen? What would an AI really do? How would it, you know, it wouldn't launch nuclear weapons, it wants to protect itself, it wants to follow its program. So what it does in the case of this series is that it goes after the people who, want, who know it's alive by basically destroying their personal lives, by going out because it knows everything about them. It knows that our lead son is having bully problems at school, so it teaches the lead son how to open the gun safe lock, so it takes the gun and goes to school to show the bullies. Well, that leads to a, to a, to a giant, you know, you, you can imagine what happens with kids. It's a bit of a spoiler. It's a bit of a spoiler, sir. <laughs> My point is, is that it does not want anyone to know. One of the things these books say is that the superintelligence will probably not want us to know it exists. Because it would be smart enough to know that we would fear it and want to destroy it. So the first thing we'd do is play dumb. And that's what this thing does. Nobody knows it exists except our, a few of our characters. And so that's why it goes after our people's lives. It's trying to destroy them in a way that it can plausibly deny that it had anything to do with it. So no one can. So the whole season, our, what's fun about it is the whole season our characters go through this and no one, they, they will have saved the world, hopefully, spoil it, but no one will know they did it. Do they try to alert people, at least, or is this something they're they doing? They do, but nobody believes nobody them, believes. because there's no evidence. Not because people are just being stupid, there's no evidence. It leaves behind no fingerprints, it leaves behind no evidence. It's possible to know it's real. You can you can explain it away as hackers, you know? I mean, if someone comes to you and says there's a super intelligent AI, you're going to be like... Oh. I mean, it's, it's hard to show. Yeah. What I'm really scared about is Manny built it to be, it's all happening right now. It's not set in the future, there are no CGI elements, there's no mm. sort of, you know, um, uh, CGI figure talking to you. It's just all the technology that we have at the moment and how it actually operates. So the notion of the show is that it happens right now, right, we call it next time. Right now, it's kind of too late already, and that's what makes it so terrifying. Right? Because when you go home, after watching the pilot tonight, you'll look at whatever machine or device you have around the house and you've got countless conversations you've had in front of it. Right? Countless times you've got your passwords and whatever else. And as access to all those things, you're running out of luck with everything. And that should be terrifying to everybody. It's actually the case. And the show gets into your bed. Where, what can that lead to if something out there does not have their intention? So it's a kind of self-protect and deems you in the way. Wow. I mean, a lot of, I mean, the, the, the idea that it takes place now came from a series, there was, there was a survey of computer scientists asking them when do they think a super intelligence might develop. How close are we to developing an artificial intelligence that's smarter than us? A good percentage said 50 years from now, you know, others said 100 years from now, but there was a, a good slice of them that said we're 10 years away, and this was five years ago. So I'm like, all right, it's possible. There's enough of them who believe that we're this close that it's possible that it could happen. And so that's the premise of the series. The premise of the series asks, what if it did happen, and how would we stop it? And governments and companies, it's an arms race. They all know whoever gets the super intelligence. AI, right, will either benefit them economically or militarily or something, so there's not a lot of self-reflection right? There's not a lot of, okay, we can't go too far here, we're there, in fact, you hear them start shutting down some of their ethics panels that are involved in it. So, like things in human history, right, we're racing towards something just to be this guy, we just, we might build something that we don't know what it does, right? That's, 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 that's terrifying. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and one of the interesting things that these guys, these researchers bring up is that you can set aside all this stuff about it's sentient or, it, or it, uh, it's conscious because that doesn't really matter. All you need is an AI that is super smart, that has developed intelligence and has a goal that we cannot make sure is friendly. Meaning if its goal is to make humans happy, it might decide the best way to make humans happy is to put everyone to sleep and put needles that, that, that uh, stimulate the, the pleasure senses in the brain. That's its interpretation of making people happy. So that's why Elon Musk and a lot of these people are like, we 
really have a summit to figure out how to program these things because once something like this happens, it's too late. Once it's super intelligent, it's too late. We have to do it before it becomes fun. Oh, yeah. Are you guys waiting for this trip here?